means you're tied to the profane world. No moment in Masonic ritual may be more frightening than what happens next to John Salsa. Actual physical threat. And the ritual says, Mr. Salsa, you are received on the instrument of torture, piercing your naked left flesh. So should the recollection of it be to your conscience, should you ever presume to reveal the secrets of Freemasonry. James Wasserman says these ominous details make a serious point to the candidates. They are faced with situations of danger, a kind of psychological manipulation in which they're shown their vulnerability. This sets the tone right away. Your first encounter in the lodge room is being stuck with a knife or a compass, and it's to warn you that your conscience should feel the same torture should you ever reveal the secrets that you're about to learn. Like all Masons, despite his reservations, Salsa swears the oath of secrecy. You see, I hereby solemnly and sincerely promise and swear effectively to give your entire life to Freemasonry, never to reveal the secrets, to live by Masonic principles, to give preferential treatment to Brother Masons. The self-curse seals that oath. A new Mason is born. Well, this is what is happening. A man is at an altar, symbolically offering his blood at that altar, which then seals the covenant that he is now bound. Salsa says it's not just about exotic ritual. It's about power. 14 American presidents have been Masons, five in the last century alone. President Truman is quoted as saying that the biggest honor that he had was to be a master of his Masonic Lodge and not the president of the United States. He says these Masonic connections directly impacted the lives of all Americans. The historical record shows that President Roosevelt, he, he was a high-ranking 33rd degree Mason, he appointed nine Supreme Court justices, at least six were formal Masons. President Truman, uh, who followed him, he was another high-ranking 33rd degree Mason. Truman also appointed uh, four justices, all of whom were Freemasons, and Eisenhower, who followed him, appointed uh, three more justices, both of whom were Masons. From 1941 to 71, the Supreme Court was dominated by Freemasons that eliminated prayer in schools. It was a Masonic Supreme Court that eliminated the Ten Commandments, eliminated Bible reading, that prohibited federal funding of parochial schools. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. He says Masonic intentions go much further. When I took the 32nd degree of Freemasonry, it says that Freemasonry's goal and aim is to rule the world. That is what the ritual itself says. Freemasons scoff at that notion. The Masons are not out there for one world order. What we're out there to do is to provide relief and to distress brothers, widows, and to society at large, and to improve our <laughs> We've got too many projects to work on to take on something that big. Is there another secret society today that impacts the lives of millions? Some believe there is. We do not belong to you. We are not your slaves. An international organization known for half a century as the Bilderberg Group. We were born a hundred years ago into a new American century. Born with a hunger to fly and a passion to build something better. And what an amazing time it's been. Decade after decade of innovation, inspiration, and wonder. So we say thank you, America, for a century of trust, for the privilege